Let's go to pod in case someone else wants to join us. <laughs> gonna... Come on. <laughs> this is hilarious. So we're going to wait. So it should teleport us soon. All right. There we go. And it teleport all of us into our reserved server. Welcome back, guys, to a new Roblox Studio tutorial. Today, we're going to be scripting a teleport party system where basically you can teleport to a new uh, reserved server. Uh, of a game of a place uh, with your uh, team members or party members uh, so this is basically the same thing you see in tel uh, like tower defense uh, games like tower defense simulator uh, as well as like story based games like doors uh, but yeah so what we're gonna do this was actually a, su a suggestion from someone but it was a pretty long time ago um, and I don't really see a lot of uh, people uh, covering how to do this on YouTube so I'm gonna be doing this in this tutorial um, so yeah now let's get started. What we're gonna do is gonna make uh, something. So it's basically like a region you enter, and I'm gonna be calling them elevators because it kind of reminds me of uh, Flood Escape, the original Flood Escape back in the 2015 days, where you go to an elevator and basically kind of brings you down with all your other party members. So this is what I'm gonna be calling them. So let's do. Let's make it quick. Oops, I did not mean to do that. So we're going to be making like a quick little thing here. And we're just going to do a little bit of building here and there. All right. So we're going to make different versions. So there's going to be one for like, let's say solo, a solo player. And they're going to be doing another for duo and then a uh, quad, right? For a squad, I guess you can say. Or so four people. So we're going to be doing, actually, let me do this. Uh, like this. Make sure these are anchored. Alright. And like this. Alright. Okay. And let's make this like nine. It's not I guess the best way to do it. Just probably make this taller. Uh whatever. I'm just gonna skip, I can spot a ceiling or something. For now, this should be good. So let's group the walls. Let's group the walls. Call these walls. The part will let's call this floor. And then for this, we're gonna duplicate this. Get this out of here. Then this will be like a touch part to detect whenever a player wants to enter. So we'll call this uh, touch part. Okay. So this will be. Uh, okay. So let's do all of this. Let's call this solo. All right. So we made this elevator. Now we also want like a billboard you want to display how many players, and like at the timer if there's any timer. Uh, and, uh, I think we might have, um, okay. So what we're going to do, let's put, let's put a folder called players. This will hold all the player values. And then I'm going to also add a timer value, which is a number value. So it's going to be a timer, which is going to basically handle the countdown until it's going to, uh, uh, until it's going to tell for all the players. Then we're going to have to add a, a bool value in here. So this will uh, basically be, we're going to call this uh, active. So this is either true or false. If this is true, then there's a countdown going. That will uh, basically mean that countdown is still counting down. Otherwise, if it's false, then that just tells the system that basically there's no more countdown and then uh, make it back to the... Um, we set the count, the timer, basically the timer. All right. Now, uh, other than that, this is good for now. Um, we do want a GUI, so I'm gonna actually just insert uh, one that I already made, and it's it's pretty simple. Double GUI. So actually, what I can do instead, I'll make another one for the ceiling. Like this set here. Make this like invisible. Like this. So all this really has, now this was for a duo, 
But obviously you can rename this whatever you want. So I can do this. For, in this case, we need it to be solo. Uh, so this will be the timer. Right here. Oops. Timer right here. And then the amount of players. And uh, so pretty much self-explanatory. So I might leave this in the description. Uh, if you guys just need this, it's really simple blur dry. It's not nothing crazy. But all right, so now we have pretty much everything to use. All right, so now let's get started on the script. Now, obviously, we're going to be adding more, but we're just going to work on this for now to make sure it works. And I'll let you guys know. So what we're going to do, actually, we're going to put this. We're going to either put this in a folder or we're going to put this in a model. We can group this again. And we have this in a model. So let's do, let's call this uh, teleports or elevators. We can call this elevators if you want. Since I said I want to call them elevators. So let's go, let's put a script. All right, now let's get started with scripting. What we're going to do, our, in the future I'll have more, uh, more elevators here. So I'll do, for I, then let's, let's make a variable first, local, uh, oops. Local elevators equal script dot parent. All right. So now let's elevator loop through all the elevators here. In this case, we only have one, but we might add more in the future, as I said. So for I L, we're gonna call this L for short. In pairs elevators we get children. Do all right. So we have first have to check that this is a model. So. We're going to also be iterating through the script. We don't care about the script. Just through the models, which should be the elevators. So, if L is a model, then we can do our code here. So, let's uh, get the billboard to run. Uh, now, the region, we need to handle this touch. We also need to update this billboard UI. So local region, or we don't have to call this region, call this touch part. So local touch part equals L dot touch part. Okay. Then like another one for the billboard, billboard UI equals L dot, uh, oh, I call this floor, let's call this ceiling now. Ceiling. I don't know if I spelled this right, but whatever. Ceiling. That billboard GUI. Now let's get the variable for the players folder. Players in elevator equals L the players. Uh yeah, what we could do, you know, this is gonna be a bit confusing. Let's call this elevator. Just so it actually kind of makes more sense. All right, you don't have to. You can make it whatever name you want. All right. Then let's lastly make a timer variable. It goes elevator dot timer. All right, but that should be good. All right. So let's just reset uh, all the variables here. So by default, this timer should just be, uh, hold on, this is a number, yeah, this is a number value. Um, or we should reset just these variables right here. So billboard UI dot timer dot text, we'll set this to nothing. Since it shouldn't really show anything if there's nothing, there's no one in the elevator. Okay. Billboard, the amount that text text equals zero out of the amount of players uh but actually it won't be the amount of players but it will be the maximum so what we'll do is we'll make a dictionary of the different types of i guess you can say parties uh party sizes so in this case it will be solo so it shouldn't be zero out of two it should be zero out of one and there will be like duo, which is out of two. And then trio, if you want to do trio. So we'll do max amounts. So max amount of players equals, and then we'll make an elevator. So for a duo, or let's do solo, goes one. So it says duo. 
We won't be using chill, but if you want, you can follow what I do. Quad. So, like this. And put a. A solo would be only a maximum of one player. Duo would be two, two, three, quad, four, self spawn duo. So it would be concatenate with a string, max amount, and then the name. So that's why it's kind of important to make sure the name of this model right here, of the elevator model, is the same as what you would put on here. So this solo has to match this name right here, and it's case sensitive. So we'll do elevator. Uh, okay. All right, pretty good. And then we'll also set the billboard GUI name. Dot, uh, what was this? Dot label. All right. So we want to first obviously check whenever this part is touched. So we made a touch part, right? So this will this should be directly under this model. So whenever a player touches this, we want to to teleport the player inside of here and register it under this player's folder and and also on top of that we want to do a want to basically make a button appear that says leave in case they want to leave right but that's later on for right now we'll check and what i actually did i did a debounce which is a cooldown so i mean you know really have to do that but it will kind of put less strain on the server so we'll do that so local debounce equals false when it's true the debounce is currently going uh so we'll do the so touch part right here that touched okay and then h would be the part that hit the touch part which would should be the character the character of the player or a part of the character of the player so local player equals game the players get player from character hit that parent so this is checks if the player uh touched this part or to be exact it checks if the part that hit it belongs to a player so if player then all right now i might um so instead of this uh usually what i do negate this and return it if it's not true so if this if it's not a player then it just cuts through that if it just uh basically returns it doesn't continue uh to the code below all right now next thing we do need to know is just to make sure that the player isn't already inside this elevator because there might be a chance that player could probably touch it though you can probably uh you probably prevent that by just moving this out but we want to make sure because we don't want duplicates in this player folder. So if player is an elevator, find this child. Player dot name, then return. Okay. So the player is already in the elevator. While well, we don't want to make the player go inside the elevator again and duplicate the process. And then lastly. Uh, we want to make sure uh, that the debounce is uh, the cooldown is not ongoing currently. So if db then return. All right. So now we can set the debounce to true. All right. And then we'll add the player to the party inside. So we teleport them inside here and add the player value to the players folder. So we'll do another one. You can also put, uh, we're going to use this as a teleport area, and this should be good. All right. So we'll make a function first. Well, let's just finish the cooldown. So cooldown equals true, wait, like let's, we can do like 0 0.2 or 0 0.3. Debounce equals false. So this will just set it back to false after a bit of time. So now let's make a function. So this so will just organize everything. So function add to party like that. I might actually just make this. Uh, I've never really done this for my tutorials, but I could just make this like zoom in just so you can guys see it more. 
Uh, right. But this kind of hurts my eyes, so that's the only problem. All right. This shouldn't be a problem. If I make this a little bit closer like here, this might be better. All right. So what we want to first do when we make this function, we're going to pass some uh, variables. So first will we'll be the elevator. We'll do EL for short now. And then the player that you want to add to the party. All right. So we're going to call this function down here. So uh, add to party, elevator, play. All right. And if you want, you can set this you can make a return value to see if it's successful or not um so if you want like an error message to show to the player you can probably do that so local local success equal um uh, or you can do error message uh, i don't have to worry about this honestly you could just do without it uh but if you do if you want like an error message to show then yeah, you can add it if you want. All right, so let's make a function for the players folder. Oh, sorry, not functions, <laughs> a variable. Local players and elevator, it's kind of the same thing. L players, all right. Then let's get the character of the player so we can teleport them. So local car equals player dot character. So if the player's character is not present, if not car, then return. And then if you put an error message if you want, so character not found, blah, 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 whatever. All right. So now, next thing, the most important thing, you want to check, obviously, if there's a maximum amount of players already. So if there's a maximum amount of players and there's no space for the player to join, then obviously we can't continue. So if not, number of players in elevator, Get children greater than uh, max amount I'll let name then return maximum amount of players reached okay now this kind of looks confusing uh oops you do not need this sorry so if the uh, if the amount of players if the amount of players inside this folder, so basically the players that are inside this elevator, is greater than the maximum of amount of players that are supported by this elevator type. So in this case, it would be solo, it would be one. Then return this error message. Okay. All right. And then um, the next one we could do is also add this again, but it's not really needed uh which is we don't want it to add to the player we don't want to add the player to the region uh not to the elevator once uh they're already in it so we don't want uh to duplicate the amount of time the player joined um this is not really needed because this is already does that check but in, if you want extra security i guess you can kind of do the same thing here where if you find the player that's already in this folder then skip that, but it's not needed. All right, so now what we'll do is actually add this value, this player value to the folder. So how we can do this is really easy. So look val equals, oops. It says dot new object valid. So this will store an object value, which is a player. Val dot name equals player dot name. So we can access it easier and we can tell that this is a player. Val the value equals player and val dot parent equals players in elevator, which is this folder right here. Okay. Pretty self explanatory. Uh, and then actually what you want to do uh, is make the uh, make a GUI. So you want to make like a button. That says leave if the player wants to leave. So what I actually did, I already make a GUI for this. So I'm going to also leave this in the description if you do need this. But again, it's pretty simple. So I'll put this here as an example. So this is how it looks like. So like you can press leave, blah, blah, blah. 
Um, and I'll right now I'll just put this inside the script, just so we can ha uh, have access to it. Then let's rename the script to handler or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Right. So we'll call, we'll make a variable for this local elevator GUI or script dot elevator. Okay, so uh, we want to add this GUI to the player's player GUI. Okay. But in case the player already has the GUI from like joining a previous elevator, we don't we won't add it. All right. Okay. So that's player dot player GUI. Find first child. Elevator. GUI dot name. Then we'll do this and destroy. Then we're going to generate. Oops. Let's destroy. We're going to generate a new thing. A local LGY clone equals elevator UI. LGY clone dot parent equals player uh, dot player UI. Uh, and oops. It should be this variable, so the clone, and then dot leave. Well, what we want to do actually, you don't want, you only want this to fire once. So once the player clicks on this uh, button right here, it will make it will teleport the player out of the elevator, and it will basically be destroyed. So the player won't click more than once. It'll only fire the event once, and it's done. Right. So we'll do a connection. So local connection. The connection connection equals elevator UI clone dot leave that mouse button one click connect function so <coughs> sorry for that so first and foremost the reason why we do this right so once the player clicks on this this uh this event won't be fired anymore. So let's say I'm in. So let's say I'm in here. I'll click this once, and it will make me leave the elevator, and that's the last time the event will be listened to. Uh, just so it's kind of clean, uh, and the player won't be able to click more than once. It'll be kind of uh basically, will kind of be a bit glitchy that way or buggy. Um, just uh I guess an optimized way to do that. Um, so we'll do connection disconnect once that happens so the player won't do it more than once and that's pretty much it but now we'll just teleport the player outside and to do that we'll get the humanoid group part so uh, we can make a variable for this or uh make a variable for this we'll look at humanoid group part we'll do it for hrp for short equals car we for child Human only group part. Okay, so human root part that C frame. And actually, I just realized we didn't make a part for the outside part. So let's put this back. Let's put this back into the script. And in this here, oops, I did not mean to do that. Uh, let's still make a new part here and put this outside. All right, and this will be outside. All right. We'll call this outside. Okay. No. Okay. Let's make sure it's anchored. And make this also not colliable because that would be weird. So equals L dot outside outside dot C frame equals vector three dot new. Oops. Not new zero for zero just so that it teleports oh what the hell this is supposed to be a plus i don't know why plus vector three dot new zero one uh, zero four zero so it just places the player a bit above on the y-axis uh so the player just doesn't glitch on the ground uh all right mm -mm -mm -mm. so honestly what really this does um so once the 
the player uh, comes in here and presses the leave button, it will teleport them. And we also want to delete this elevated clone that it has inside. So we'll do elevated UI clone. It's right as well. Now, honestly, this probably then the connection is probably redundant in this case because you're really destroying the <laughs> screen UI anyways. But you know, it's an extra security measure, I guess. So this is pretty much it. So now we're going to return success. This is the message now, which is successful. So once you go down here, we'll do uh, print error message. Get the, the message on our console. So this should be good. Now, uh, I didn't actually publish this. We're going to make the timer system, of course. We're just going to test out how the actual thing works. Um, oh my god, I actually forgot to do, do one important thing, which is to actually teleport the uh, the player inside. So we'll do l.floor uh, above the ground. And I think... Oh, I made it all the way here. Huh. Yeah, let's bring it. Let's bring the... So if I touch this, all right, it brings me here. So if I want to leave, I'll press this and it gets me out. So now let's actually see oh, what happened. Uh, da, 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 da. Yes, I know what happened. So once we are in this elevator, it still shows our player, our player's value inside the folder. So this is why they don't let me in anymore. So now we know that the error is we'll just remove this value. So what we'll do, I don't know if I made the valve, so valve will just be right here, so we'll do valve destroyed. So if you pay attention now, this is the player's folder, so if you go inside here, it makes a new value, which is uh, equal to our character. So let's leave, now this value is destroyed. Alright, cool, now let's make the timer, right? Once we've done the timer, then we can start on the teleport system, which is the most important part. So we'll make another function right here. Let's actually make it in this here. All right, so now we're done with this. We don't have to worry about this. So let's do function start timer, right? And this will basically change uh, uh, with this, this value. Oh, we'll, we'll change this value, but uh, once this value change, it will change the billboard UI here. All right, so this will just, take the elevator let's call this el again and then the timer and then the timer text which i think uh, should be the builder joy so the timer value timer uh takes joy so what we'll do here is make a spawn function so what this does is basically makes it run alongside the other code in this uh uh in the script because we don't want the script to be preoccupied with just this function We'll do spawn function. All right. So we'll set this value to true, this active value, because the timer is currently counting down. Timer that active. All right. So now we'll do a for loop, which makes it count down. So for i equals. Uh, we can do. Oh, this AI is being weird. So what we want it to start. Let's say like 15 seconds. Now I don't know if um okay we can make a variable for this if you want. So we'll do uh 15. Okay, in this case let's put 10. Oops. Put 10. I can't not. I don't know why. Uh so for i equals time to start. Oops. Timer start, which is 10 seconds, then to zero. We want to go down to zero and go increment by negative one, which is basically a decrement, but it's kind of weird. Then do. So this will be a for loop. For each one, we'll do wait, wait one. So we wait one second every time it goes down. Okay. So first, we want to check for each one if this active value is. Uh, False. So if this is false, that means the actor, the timer, 
is reset. So when we want to reset this value, let's say there's no more players inside this, we want to reset it. So we'll set this uh, value to false. So this will tell this timer right here that, well, no one is in this elevator anymore. So reset the timer. So if not timer, the active stuff value, then return. So this will basically break out the entire for loop and return uh, from the function. So we'll basically end this function. Otherwise, if this is still an active timer, then we'll set the timer values. Timer value equals i. And then timer text, which is this billboard to you right here. The text equals the two string i dot dot seconds yeah. or we can put timer dot value assuming it's really pretty much the same thing uh, whatever okay and that's pretty much it. start the timer now to reset the timer function reset timer so all this does We'll take in the timer, timer text. Okay. So timer, the active the value is false. Then timer text, text equals to nothing. And then timer that value equals timer star. So we'll reset this back to the beginning, which is 10 seconds. All right. So now we have these functions, we could then call them when we need them. So once this is, um, so this is for the touch part. Now, I don't really think we need this anymore. We're pretty much done with this. So what we're gonna do is then handle the timer. So for each one, we're gonna also change the, the this part right here, which it says uh, zero out of two, right? or well, actually, this should be zero out of one, but it's gonna be updated by the script. So uh, amount should be zero. Okay, and what this does, so we're gonna actually make a uh, a variable for how many players are in an elevator right so local x or not our local x, current amount so the current amount of players equals zero okay then we'll detect whenever a player enters this folder so to do that's pretty easy so player player is an elevator that child uh this is weird so players elevator this should be child added function this will be the the value that's added inside and this will uh, be an object value so what we're going to do when the player is added first we want to check um if the play the current amount of players or the, the amount of players that there was before the player entered is zero. So if this is the first player, that means the players, the amount of players before was zero. So once that happens, we will start the timer, right? Once we detect that case. So if current equals zero, then, then we'll pass the elevator, then timer, then the billboard UI, uh, okay. All right. Otherwise, we will change the current amount uh, text. And actually, let's change the variable first. Current amount equals number of players in elevators. Get children. All right. And then do a billboard UI. That amount. That text equals current or two string 
current amount dot dot slash max amount and then the index of the elevator so in this case it will be current amount of players to the max amount so like that pretty self-explanatory right now if the player leaves we want to stop the timer if there's no more players left so to detect whenever the player leaves you will do pretty much the same thing as this so players in elevator dot child removed child removed the net function all right so now in this case unlike this we will actually update the current amount of players before we do anything. So current match equals, well, actually pretty much copying this. So, yeah. so if current match is zero, then we reset the timer. And then pass the timer, then the billboard that, uh, Billboard, billboard UI, the timer. All right. So if there's no more players left, we'll reset the timer because we don't need the timer to count down. Okay. And we'll do the same thing with the text, basically copy and paste. Okay. Um. So this is pretty much self-explanatory. So once the player joins, if the there was if he if the player was the first person to join, then we start the timer. But if player leaves and there's no more players left, then we reset the timer. Okay. So now what we want is uh, we can test this right now. So let's actually test this. So as you can see, it counts down nine, eight, seven. But if it counts down to zero, nothing will happen. We just set the timer. And that's all. So if you leave, it disappears. But you can join back again, and it resets to the timer. Oh, this is pretty cool. There is an edge case for this, for the remove. And that is if the player leaves the game, we also want to want to remove it from the player. Uh sorry, from the yeah, from the player's folder. Um so since we've pretty much done this, I might as well do this right now before we handle the teleports. So make a function for remove player if you want to remove a player, a specific player from the folder. So the function remove player and then we'll pass in the player that left the game we might also do one for uh, we could also do one for um died too um we'll do both if the player died and if the player left in that case we'll move the player from the elevator all right so it's good so for i uh, we're gonna look for all the elevators. Uh, elevator in pairs. Yep, dot parent. Get children. It's similar to what we did here, right? So if elevator is a model. Uh, okay, this AI. Um. So we'll do if it's a model. In this case, if it's a model, then it should have this player's folder. So we don't really need to check it. But we could also make another check, just so the the script won't uh, break. Uh, and uh, find first child well, players if I have the player's folder. Okay. Oops, there should be an and. If play if elevator elevator the players find first child. Uh, player that name then elver the players final child player that name destroy so this is pretty much all we need uh for the remove place function and ai ai helped me with that so that's pretty cool so we'll do game dot players dot player removed removing connect function uh, so the player so this is the text whenever the player leaves the game no player okay We'll also do when the player resets the game that players player add connect function player and then this is when the player joins the game but you want to detect when the player 
uh, when the player's character uh, is basically loaded. And then if that character dies, then we'll remove the player. The player, that character added, function, car, car, vapor child, humanoid, that died, connect, function, remove player. Pretty nice. All right. So we handled these edge cases. This will be really helpful to avoid bugs. All right. So now let's actually start with a teleporting. So actually, I'll leave like a blog, uh, not a blog, but a documentation. So there's a certain way to do this because we're not just teleporting the player players to just any server. We want a reserved server to teleport the players to. Right. So in that case, we'll use uh, we'll use teleport service by a certain method to do that. And uh, let me just check here. So actually I'll leave it. I'll leave it. I'll probably leave it on the screen for you to look at. Um, but if I'm not wrong, and so you all you have to do is use the reserve server function. And then uh, you use a teleport to private server to teleport uh, the party to a reserve server. So let's add, let's put this in the beginning, actually, why not? So teleport, teleport, players, Oops. players, okay. Oh my God, I did not do that. All right, let's see. So what we want to do is we'll pass the elevator, let's do elevator for sure. And then we'll go through all the players in the folder. So four I, player in pairs. Elevator, what players get children? Uh, do sorry. And before that, we'll make a folder. Uh, sorry, not a folder, a table. So local players to TP equals a table. And then we'll insert this. Insert each uh, player. Table insert. Uh players to tp and player uh, that value oh, this is kind of what makes sense so we'll do like player val i guess so inside this value it stores the actual player object so this is what's being added to this table so for each player a value will add the actual player to this table right here okay so now uh, we want to reserve our server. Now to do this, it will be a local server. So it equals TP. Oh yeah, I forgot. We do need to require a T teleport service. So local TP service. Game get service teleport. All right. So TP service. Just handle all the teleports. Reserve server. And a place ID. So uh, to do that, I think... This is a bit confusing, but you do want to make a place, right? And it has to be uh, say a place under the same experience. So what I'm going to do, uh, we're going to add, uh, we do need to save this to Roblox. So we'll do this. Teleport. Teleport. Teleport, uh, teleport parties. Teleport parties. Okay, save this. Okay, so we'll go to game settings and go to places, we'll create a new place. Okay, so let's, let's go to configure and let's call this um, target or target place. Okay, and then we'll save this. So once you've done that, uh, what you should do is, this process is kind of confusing, but what you do is you go to the places sections right here and then you'd uh, go to, I think, um, so you see these two places. You edit one on Studio, so I'm already editing this on Studio right here. Uh, and then you probably do the share here, and then you paste it on your browser. And right here, it has the place ID, right? Now, 
before anything, make sure you publish this and make sure it is uh, public. All right, go to game, game settings, places, I think security or uh, permissions. So make sure this is public as well and publish your original game right here as well. So you do publish like that and make it, I don't know how to make it public, it's whatever. Right here is the actual game. So you just uh, paste this in like that. Uh, and it should show that this is a sub place, I guess you could say a, a child place of this game, which is ready, which is the main game that you start with, right? Um, so this should be how you actually get the place ID. It is kind of confusing. I don't know why Roblox made this confusing. And what I suggest you to do is probably make a folder for values or just make another number value for the place ID just so it's more organized. Um, so you could either do a new value or uh, I don't think it matters. We'll just do number value. Now let's call this place ID. So we know where it is. Fitting in. And then you paste your, uh, you paste your place ID. All right. So this should be really good. And so when we do a reserve server, you should uh, need your place ID right here, as it says. So you can just do elevator, the place ID, the value. All right. So that should be good. All right, now we'll teleport the players with the server code. Okay, so TP service, teleport, oops, teleport private server. We'll use the same value right here, elevator, that place ID, that value, and then the server code, and then the players to teleport, which is the table that we just filled right here. Pretty self-explanatory. All right. Now all we need is to call this function when the timer ends. So we'll do here. So after this for loop right here, after it ends, we'll call this function, teleport players, and then we'll pass the elevator. So this is pretty easy. All right. So now we'll just test this out. Make sure this is published as well as the target place. So I just make the target place here. You can add like whatever. Uh, just like add. On a like a car or whatever, uh, whatever. So we'll do like this. Just so we know this is the, our actual place we want to teleport to. So publish this and make this public, so it won't give you any errors when you teleport. So let's actually go to the game now. Okay, so this should be our target or this target place, and this is our start place. So let's join this. Let's start this out. Okay, so now it works. And this is our asset we just added. So pretty cool. Now, you might be asking, okay, how do I do it for more than just one person? Well, it's actually super easy. Now I made the, uh, now I made this dictionary. You can pretty much add any amount of players you want, honestly. So you can really just duplicate this. Now we have this working and let's rename it to a what? How much players you want on it so we can do duo do trio and you can add even quad all right and this will all be inside here now obviously make sure the names are uh, the same as in the table right here obviously you can make more you can have one for five, you can have one for six, you can have one for up to a hundred. Uh, I'm not sure if that's supported though, but you know, hypothetically. Uh, and obviously for each of one of these, this will change once you run. So we solo, duo two, three, three, and quad four. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm gonna actually test this with friends before we end the video. All right, we are back guys. We got some friends with us, our subscribers. So let's test this out. I think, oh, someone left. All right. Uh, okay. And he joined back. That's weird. All right, so let's go. Let's go to quad in case someone else wants to join us. Yeah. Bro died. We're going to leave this guy. Uh, 
<laughs> I'm gonna come on. <laughs> this is hilarious. Uh, okay, anyways, but yeah, so we're gonna wait. So it should teleport us soon. All right, there we go. And it teleport all of us into our reserved server. W's in the chat. <laughs> Alright, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like and subscribe. If you want a suggestion, leave it down in the comment section below. Uh, if you're interested in being in our videos in the future, then be sure to join our Discord. And that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next one.